Good morning and good afternoon, good evening, uh, dear friends of Digital Futures community. Welcome back. I thank all of you uh, who are here with us today for the both the, the fourth international conference on computational design and robotic fabrication and the opening event for the One Planet workshops, which we were launched tonight. So this is actually the 12th year of Digital Futures program seizing the opportunity uh, given by the pandemic from 2020, we launched the program on a global scale, condensing the last decade of experience in hosting workshops, lectures, conference, exhibitions, and numerous publications. Digital Futures becomes a global effort by architecture community to combat influence of the pand pandemic. The world came together as one in the spirit of solidarity to offer the sequence of virtual events for the free to the students across the global and to share with each other in the new knowledge collective, which we cannot even imagine at the very beginning of the 10 years ago. So this year, um, the world focusing on the recovery and the re-virtualization. It is in the same spirit and the solidarity uh, we start to re-emphasize the importance of the community and inclusivity for our digital future program. And we theming uh, the annual series uh, sequence of the workshops, uh, lectures, and conference, and gave the special topic one planet. So which aiming to establish the planetary classroom where everyone can come together and debate ideas. Like some of the global brain. So we invited prominent professors around the world coming to make lectures on the CDR uh, conference platform and also on the PhD consortium we set up, uh, which came to successful closure early this week. And we opened new opportunities for students around the world to gain access to the thought and research of some of the, the leading individuals and professors. So students are actually very open. Uh, we have like 15 uh, PhD candidates who take the courses. Uh, and also at the same time, we have a lot of uh, PhD candidates and researchers who visit and audit in this uh, 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 event. So uh, this year, the CDR topic uh, will be addressed to hybrid intelligence. And the CDRF, the, the, the whole name is computational design and the robotic fabrication. And next, I would like to briefly introduce um, uh, the sequence of the event this year. Actually, uh, we're starting from June the 13th and we come in by a nine days PhD consortium, which organized by Tongji University. And this is like a frontier uh, lectures. We invited almost 20 professors around the world give lectures on this platform. At the same time, we share it to Bilibili YouTube and the Metaverse uh, Crystal Voxel platform and try to, uh, 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 to establish a special culture, which is like assembly the new knowledge by the future uh, uh, scholars and students. So uh, today is uh, June the 25th in uh, Asian Pacific time. So we have a one day conference named uh, CDRF Hybrid Intelligence. And tonight we'll have the opening ceremony. Uh, from June the 26th to July the 3rd uh, as uh, the culture we set up uh, over the past 20, uh, 12 years, we will have uh, special workshops. So this year, uh, uh, more than 130 workshops around the world. Uh, uh, participate the digital future workshops. At the same time, uh, the exhibition opening on the uh, 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 metaverse will start uh, July the 19th. So welcome, join us uh, at that time. So this is a global uh, data, actually the participants to the whole events. So we have the most like 50% from Asia Pacific area. And at the same time, uh, we are from a lot from the States, Europe and South America, uh, Africa, Australia as well. Uh, for this year, the CDR conference, we, uh, we have the submissions, um, uh, submission papers 
around 152. And uh, the exact rate is around 28% from 28 countries, 67 overseas institutions, and 38 domestic institutions. So this is the background submission background. Actually, uh, China uh, around 50% and we have a, a, a big number from uh, different parts of the, uh, of the world, it's, which is quite open. So in the future, we are looking forward to uh, establish a platform for, a global, um, uh, uh, for the global scenarios, invite different people to join us. So the, the right column is about the institutions uh, from uh, uh, different universities and research centers uh, all over the world. And this is uh, um, uh, international sub submissions uh, from different countries. The keywords, uh, we can uh, figure out the, uh, the keywords for all the papers. Uh, we actually um, uh, make some analysis of that. So the, the machine learning actually keywords most uh, 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 popular and including the generate design, deep learning, robotic fabrication, computation design, GAN, uh, and so on and so forth. So that's the uh, uh, paper keywords and the key elucidation. So uh, if you're interested in that, welcome join us in the paper presentation uh, sessions. So over the past four years, this is the fourth year, right? And uh, we already published uh, uh, five um, uh, uh, books, conference books, collaborate with uh, Springer and which could be indexed uh, on the database of Springer. So uh, including every year proceedings and also uh, architectural intelligence, which was published in 2020. So this year, the topic is hybrid intelligence and the Springer uh, 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 book already uh, open. Uh, you can check all of your papers uh, on the Springer uh, online platform. At the same time this year, uh, Today, we want to also launch uh, the new journal, which um, uh, actually uh, uh, funded by Tongji University and Architecture uh, Digital Future uh, uh, Community. So architecture intelligence guided by the scientific design thinking focus on the three future scenarios, including smart habitat, virtual habitat, and spatial habitat, utilizing the evidence-based architecture research methodologies. So architecture intelligence reconstructs architecture knowledge system and creates an international academic platform of multi-disciplines, establish the new paradigm for the sustainable development. So it forms an interdisciplinary platform for the intelligent thinking methodology and the practical research on uh, formation, generation, simulation, optimization, construction, operation, and inhabitation as well. So as the editor-in-chief, uh, I would like to represent uh, all the, uh, the editors and also uh, including uh, Borong, uh, uh, you're invited to be uh, one of uh, our uh, editors. So thanks for that uh, in the future. So we're looking forward to future, uh, especially the PhD candidates and the researchers can contribute your research and papers to this platform. So website is springer.com. Uh, 44223. So this is actually the um, uh, inaugural issue. We have 15 papers, uh, which is uh, under uh, editing. And uh, because of the COVID, uh, which will postpone around uh, uh, one month, hopefully uh, the physical mockup, uh, the physical uh, uh, inaugural issue will be coming at the end of uh, uh, August. So we have the author, including uh, Mario Capo, who actually gave a commentary opening to the, uh, to the journal, and Neil Leach, Patrick Schumann, uh, Matthias de Campo also uh, contribute three commentary and papers um, for the journal. And we have some review articles because this is the, the inquiries, you have a lot of review articles. Uh, including um, Professor Mike Xie uh, from uh, RMIT, Aki Mangus from ICD, and Matt Thompson from, uh, from uh, CETA, and also Roland Snook from RMIT, and uh, Lin Borong, uh, uh, Professor Lin Borong also contributed his research, uh, 
uh, Wu Yupeng from Nottingham, University of Nottingham, and uh, uh, Liu Jianlin, who is the uh, uh, deputy editor, uh, deputy chief editor, also contribute paper, including my team. We make introduction of the uh, bionic lunar habitat three uh, D printing, and uh, uh, we have uh, Huang Yu uh, from uh, Guangzhou University contribute another research paper, and Huang Weixing from Tsinghua also have a, a res uh, research articles. So. Uh, 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 we have around uh, 15 uh, 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 papers, including um, four um, uh, categories, the commentary, uh, review, uh, research articles, and also uh, in this journal, maybe in the future, we have case study journals uh, based on some pavilion or evidence-based uh, case studies. So this is the introduction for that. So the papers, authors actually from China, uh, UK, uh, um, uh, Australia, Germany, Denmark, Swiss, so and so forth. So um, uh, we have four uh, papers from China and the eleven from uh, from the other side of the world uh, in the in Upper East. So this is a launch editorial. So uh, if you're interested in that, please check on the website, which is like uh, the manifesto for why we set up this uh, uh, journal and what's our vision and the mission. So if you're interested in that, please check uh, from the website. So today uh, it's um, really special. Uh, we would like first uh, to invite um, uh, our chairman of college council in the College of Architecture and Urban Planning at Tongji University, Professor Liu Sun, to give an opening speech. So let's welcome uh, Professor Liu Sun. Okay, thank you, Professor Yuan. Uh, other speakers, presenters, professors, and students, good morning. I welcome you on behalf of Tongji University and its College of Architecture and Urban Planning to the fourth conference of communication, uh, computational design and robotic fabrication to be the part of this platform that join us together for discussion on the most advanced research in this respective field. <clears throat> Since the summer of 2011, the Digital Future Initiative hosted by the College uh, of Architecture and Urban Planning at Tongji University has been promoting the theoretical and the scientific research on computational design and robotic fabrication among academic institutions and encouraging collaborations and interaction internationally. Over the past decade, this program have launched itself from a small local event to a truly international global impact as well as an integral part of schools international collaborations. It is all thanks to the diligent, uh, diligent work by all the people behind the scenes, contributing ceaselessly to the course that the program achieved what is today. Uh, the conference on compute, uh, computational design and robotic fabrication is one of the newest addition to the digital future program started in 2019 as a shared international platform for researchers around the world to present their work on the most novel digital te technology of architecture design and construction. The presentation in this conference ranges in topic all aspects of digital fabrication and computation design in origin all corners of the world. I hope that conference, uh, uh, I hope that conference as well as the digital future program will continue to build on that and continue to serve as a stage for international discussions and collaborations. Finally, uh, I would like to wish the fourth conference on computational design and robotic fabrication uh, a success and wish everybody that is here 
to enjoy the learning process and these amazing opportunities. Thank you again to all of you uh, who are here with us today. Thanks. Thanks a lot for the opening speech from Professor Liu Song. So it's a really good uh, starting uh, for the morning. So briefly, I would like to introduce the, uh, the event uh, uh, framework uh, schedule today. So this morning, um, uh, we would like to invite uh, Professor Lin Burong from Tsinghua University to give the keynote afterwards, and, uh, and then followed by actually uh, eight uh, different uh, parallel sessions which focus on different topics, including two sessions on computational design and formation, and two, session on, two sessions on uh, material and fabrication, and three sessions on the artificial intelligence impl impl implementations. And uh, uh, last but not least, we have a session on the simulation and optimization. So welcome, join us uh, in the whole day event. And uh, the morning will opening by Professor Lin Rong, and the after afternoon opening uh, will uh, we would like to invite New Li to give another uh, keynote speech. So um, it's a great honor here to have uh, Professor Lin Rong, who is the deputy chain uh, dean from Tsinghua University, and I would like to briefly introduce uh, his background. I think um, uh, Bo Rong Lin uh, actually played a very important, significant leadership uh, in the academic, uh, academic world of China, who is a professor and deputy dean of school and architecture at Tsinghua University, and also served as a dean of the key laboratory of eco-planning and uh, green building, commissioned by the Ministry of Education China, and who is also the fellow of uh, International Building uh, Performance Simulation Association, IB. PSA. Professor Lin was awarded the National uh, Changjiang Scholar and uh, also 2020 the Explo uh, Explorer Prize of uh, National Prize of China. Um, uh, meanwhile, uh, meanwhile, he is the winner of uh, the National Science Fund for the Distinguished Young Scholars as well. So Professor Lin's research focused on the technology innovation to improve the built environment quality and enhance energy efficiency and carbon neutricity. And several technical innovation awards he had uh, achieved. Professor Lin has published uh, uh, um, uh, uh, over 100 uh, SCI journal papers. And his Google H index is around 38, I think which is the most one of the most highest uh, in our discipline. He is the edit editor, uh, uh, editorial member of five international peer review journals and also including uh, architectural intelligence. So today, uh, Professor Lin uh, uh, will give um, a keynote speech on exploring intelligent um, architectural design and a smart operation for the carbon uh, neutrality and occupant health. So let's welcome uh, to uh, uh, give the screen to Professor Lin for the keynote speech of um, CDI of 2022. Okay, yeah. Uh, thank you, Professor Yuan, uh, for your kind invitation and uh, uh, introduction. Uh, really, uh, it's my great honor to join the fourth international conference on the computational design in robotic fabrication. Yeah. So today I would like to uh, give a report about what we uh, studied in recent five years, uh, mainly as the carbon neutrality and the occupant highs uh, oriented to explore the intelligent architectural design in smart op uh, operation. And, uh, Okay. Okay. No problem. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So, firstly, uh, yeah, it's the background. So, in the context of carbon uh, neutrality, uh, digitization, and the one highs uh, targets in China and the world. Uh, in fact, they are uh, sorry, they are uh, rigorously developing high performance green buildings as an important way to achieve the target. 
and also as the low carbon transformation and uh, to improve the built environment quality. So in fact, the target uh, is very complicated. Uh, if we, uh, we use the building energy consumption and the IEQ and highs as the target, there are many, many factors to uh, uh, affect them, such as the climate, the envelope, the equipment, in the maintain mode, the occupant behavior, and also the indoor environment parameters. Especially if we consider the target from one zone to whole building, yeah, maybe uh, with more than 100 zones, and the scale extended to the community, to the city, uh, it will be very, very complicated. I mean, from the mathematical mode uh, viewpoint, so we need a systemic approach. Uh, it's the way and also the key to manage complexity, just like this picture. If we didn't consider the problem uh, with a systematic approach, yeah, maybe finally, yeah, you will be uh, shocked by the another uh, another pillows, yeah, behind you. So uh, we, uh, we we strengthen to solve these problems with uh, scientific thought, and also it will be useful uh, and suitable for the mechanism research and scenario analysis in the multi-factor complexity systems. Another approach should be the multidisciplinary cross connection. In fact, there are many, many uh, knowledges uh, behind the traditional uh, building technology uh, and the other kind of uh, uh, knowledges. So uh, we need to introduce uh, the big data in the AI. And also we should use the human oriented thought to uh, solve this with a close uh, multidisciplinary uh, study. And because we are facing the multiple scales from outdoor to indoor, from the big city to a single building, and also across the whole life scale of the building, that means uh, we need to uh, collect more uh, knowledge. So AI, just as you know, uh, AI and the digital technology is the key to uh, promoting building industry suite. Along with the worldwide third wave of the big data in the AI technology, uh, breaking slow and occupying the leading position in AI technology has relation to China national strategy. However, Combination of AI technology in the various industry is the promise to realize the social value. I present the building industry in China is rapidly shifting toward digitalization and intelligentization uh, with the policy guidance. But if we consider the three cornerstones of AI, First is data, the second is algorithms, and the third one is the computing power. We do not yet have a significant advantage in the algorithm design and the computing power. However, being the world largest construction market in the past decades, China has strategic advantage in terms of the design data in the operational data accumu accumulation. So uh, I think CDRF is a good platform to uh, boost the communication of the uh, knowledge uh, exchange. Uh, I just want to use uh, one uh, famous word by the father of the modern uh, management 
the Peter Junkler. A strategy is not to study what we will do in the future, but to study what we do today to have a future. So I think this sentence will be very uh, helpful to uh, understanding the importance of this conference, the CDRF. So with these uh, ideas, uh, what we want to show you is considering the four savings in the one environment protection of green building requirement. The key scientific questions are, what's the mechanism, uh, especially the interaction between human and environment? And the second is how to carry out an intelligently design for the building. And the third one is how to realize the smart uh, operation and uh, management. So we should deepen the scientific knowledge of the climate, the human environment building, coupling mechanism into solve the technical innovation in the design operation uh, maintenance process. And today due to the time limited in considering the uh, subject of the components, yeah, what I want to show you is the part two and part three. In fact, this study uh, was uh, always funded by the uh, national uh, fundings. Yeah, the first day is supported by the Ministry of uh, Science and Technology. That means the uh, Green Building Design Opinion, uh, the MISO organization and platform. And also there is a joint project supported by the uh, NSFC of China and the EPFRC of UK. Uh, the total performance of low carbon buildings in UK in, in the China. And the third one is the research in the application of the post occupancy evaluation of green buildings, uh, actual operation performance also supported by the most. So these figures show you the history of our study uh, for uh, in the past uh, 10 years. And firstly, uh, I want to show you the intelligent design uh, research. In fact, there are great potential for performance uh, optimization in the building programming stage. Because the building form, the space in the, the plan, the layout in the structure play the significant roles in copying the performance indicators of green buildings. And also, uh, as IEA point out, more than 40% of our building energy savings potential comes from the schematic design phase. So if we have a review of the uh, process of building performance optimization, uh, maybe there are two ways. Firstly, is the forward optimization. And secondly, will be a reverse uh, process. Anyway, what we focus is to optimize the design uh, parameters. And finally, we get a good result of the green performance indicators. And for the reverse uh, optimization, that means we use these indicators as target to find a formula or function of the building form space, uh, the layout, yeah, in the structure, materials, equipment, and so on, and get a mathematic uh, solution. Anyway, for this process, the most important technology should be the digital design. And second, that is the performance simulation. And the third one is the optimization technology. However, if we have a review of the research in the past 10 years, uh, in fact, there are an urgent need to develop design methods for the multi-objective -ob building performance uh, for different scenarios. Uh, the technical difficulty one is we need to study the conversion organism for the CD and the CE, uh, sorry, 3D models 
to solve the time consuming in the ILO platform problems for one design and several models. And the second difficulties is there is urgent need to develop performance simulation corners for the schematic stage to balance the computational efficiency, occurrency, and the morphological versatility. The third one is we need to consider the, the multi-objective organisms to integrate optimization seeking process in the decision making process. So what we did is firstly we developed a 3D building space recognition algorithm. We proposed a feature based graph algorithm to extract the building performance simulation input model in real time. Yeah, just with this uh, animation showed for this building, uh, which has more than 400 surfaces, uh, nearly 50 rooms, yeah, we can use a, a desktop uh, or notebook to recognize uh, only in 1.6 second and to realize the real time simulation possible. Secondly, what we need is a performance oriented design uh, optimization method. We can use the energy consumption and the other uh, indicators such as the thermal comfort uh, certification ratio in the daylighting or natural ventilation uh, indicators as a function into give a, a parametric design uh, research and carry out the reverse research for the optimum solution. And also we can introduce the uh, DNI idea to select the call parameters and defend the genetical coding methods inside the objective to generalize the architectural form and the parameters uh, sightings. Here, what we uh, introduce is the multi asset uh, genetic organism. So with this approach, yeah, we can uh, finish a, a generalistic design for the form and the layout in the performance uh, assembly. So what I show you is we select the core parameters that have a large impact on the energy consumption and we defend, uh, defend the genetic coding myself for the design parameters. And also, yeah, we determine the uh, use of specified parameters uh, genetically encode and generate uh, architectural design genes yeah, for the building. Here, I show you the genetic organism uh, tools, including the building shape in the performance parameters. They are 34 parameters we introduced to describe the performance and the uh, geometry of the uh, building. The core algorithm two is to develop a fast prediction model for the building heating, cooling, and lighting load and energy. And here we finding a new uh, algorithm to simulate the load. And finally, this algorithm uh, meet the occurrence uh, for actually 114 cases and the uh, 10 saving are more than uh, 50%. The third algorithm is we develop a multi-objective optimization based on the performance decision preference. Uh, the, the reason is we, if we want to find the optimal form uh, and we want to uh, achieve the high performance uh, certification in the high convergence uh, efficiently, uh, what we need is to define a nearby area in the nearby value of your preference. So here we develop a new organism 
uh, with the uh, reversion of the NSJ2 uh, organism. And finally, yeah, with what I show you this case, yeah, we can see for the Pascal, the new organism, it's very uh, quickly get the convergence of the optimum result in the 10th event is more than one tenth. And the certification ratio is increased by more than uh, six tenths. And also, uh, recently we are uh, exporting the daylight in ventilation performance, faster simulation with the CNN in GAN. Uh, we carry out the daylight in simulation for the uh, cloudy uh, result. So the idea is, Generally, we use data to uh, compare the occurrence of, of the simulation. But uh, at this period, we can use the picture to carry out uh, the data mining and uh, um, or machine learning. So here we introduce the uh, CNN and the GAN for the performance simulation in optimization. And finally, we use the SSIM, the structure uh, similarity index to uh, optimize the approach. So finally, we can see the time saving uh, is, uh, yeah, is uh, uh, amazing. Yeah, less than one second. And traditional measure will be 10 seconds or more. And also, we carry out an organism for automatic recognition for the housing plan pictures. Uh, this study wants to solve the challenge. The manual uh, extraction is time consuming in LO plum. So low cost and faster uh, extraction muscle are needed urgently. Here we develop an um, automatic organism based on the OCR in the regional gloss. The occurrence of the computation level is 100%, and the recognition rate is more than uh, 96%. So finally, we can realize the quick, uh, call, the, uh, quick uh, achievement of the picture information. It will be very helpful for us to carry out the future uh, machine learning. So with the two approach together, we establish a deep learning faster performance prediction engine model, build a regional plan in block block data site to enhance the university of the shape perception and realize the 10 seven more than 95% for daylighting in natural ventilation simulation. And with this support, we can realize the quick prediction for the generalized scheme. So uh, with this support, we can carry out performance-oriented generative design for the facade and for the uh, ship. So here I show you two uh, videos. So if we use a formula to generalize the windows in the uh, facades, so we can use the daylighting performance uh, maximum, the lowest building energy consumption, yeah, in the other such as summer comfort in the uh, natural integration and natural ventila uh, ventilation indicators oriented. So we can optimize the facade generative design. And recently, we also carry out some research on the cognitive intelligence of architecture design. Considering the challenge of the problem of innovative cognition of architecture space design, it's very difficult. So we give a special solution. Firstly, is to realize the standard standardization 
of a cognitive representation muscle for 3D modeling. Uh, we just to uh, collect the design comment to find a, a database of the comment to the object and to realize the natural uh, language model. And with this support, we can realize the cognitive uh, study and design thinking yeah, based on the event log and the design data. With this support, we can realize the computer automatic perception and understanding of design behavior is uh, programming. Just uh, use uh, international green building design compilation as an uh, example. Uh, we launched an uh, international computation last year. Uh, there are more than 115 participants. Uh, yeah, all of them are architects. And they use our uh, software uh, resided in uh, 382 comment and uh, 13, sorry, it should be 300,000 effective operation and more than 25 Rhino objective tabs, uh, more than uh, 340 uh, generative objective. And finally, we invite uh, nine architecture judges to score in evaluate uh, independently and conduct the data mining according to the rating level in the structure and summarize and summarize and evaluate the quantitative relationship in the laws between the architecture design collaborativity and the design operation command used in the uh, uh, Rhino software. So in fact, we found some interesting uh, result. There are five parameters will be related to the design uh, creativity, such as I use the common diversity as example. If the uh, design creativity uh, get a high score, that means the common use a higher frequency. And uh, all of the participants has a similar high uh, frequency common usage in the computation. So I think in the future that this technology will be helpful for us to uh, carry out the uh, cognition and quantitative evaluation of the uh, architectural design uh, creativity in the future. Okay, the second part, what I want to show you is how to realize the smart operation in management. Uh, due to the current status for the uh, commissioning in the services uh, operation and management in real world, we think maybe in the future, as the human-oriented idea more and more popular. So maybe firstly, we need to get the environment data. And secondly, to realize the scientific feature of this environment in the uh, occupant behavior. And finally, uh, we can realize a good control for the development uh, system. And then we can give the feedback to the system and result in the good uh, IEQ in high uh, response in the good certification rate in the real uh, building. So our solution is uh, SUCF, just as this framework. Firstly, to get the efficient IEQ data collection. Secondly, is the 
scientific understanding of the spatial temporal uh, features of the IEQ. And finally, we use the multi-objective building performance approach to improve the IEQ performance as well as uh, energy efficiency. Uh, what we did in the past eight years is, firstly, we, uh, we developed a sensor system. Uh, the name is IBM, an intelligent building uh, environment monitor. Uh, it has uh, integrated temperature humidity, sorry, uh, CO2, PM2.5, and illuminance in the other parameters. And it will be very easy to uh, transmit data to the cloud through Wi Fi or 3G or 4G. This table shows you the parameters and the principles of the sensors. We develop a solution to improve the sensor occurrence. That is, firstly, carry out the sensor comparison. Secondly, we consider the thermal interfaction uh, among different sensors and use CFD to optimize their, uh, to optimize and minimize uh, inter uh, influence between them and improve the occurrence of the sensors. And finally, is we uh, improve the hardware performance. And also, we carry out a calibration, a, cl a cloud calibration, yeah, under the national stand, yeah, in the platform. So with this approach, we can realize the right here, right now survey, uh, where the mobile interface, such as we use the WeChat and use the QR code. That means we can get the uh, IEQ parameters, also the human uh, response at the same time in some place. And finally, we can build the uh, parameters distribution in the occupant uh, subjective response at the same time. Uh, with these sensor systems, uh, we got the data performance in 200 buildings, more than 10 million square meters in 31 cities in China in a block. Uh, we carry out a long term, uh, more than several years in high frequency, uh, such as five minutes in high density and large scale uh, platform. Here, what I show you is in China, in UK, in Boston of um, uh, United States, in Paris of uh, France, yeah, and so on. And also uh, for the COVID-19, uh, 2020, this system also be used to improve the security study. Uh, we installed more than 224 IBM sensors in eight hospitals in Wuhan and Beijing city, yeah, such as this is the Lei San uh, hospital. Yeah, we use these sensors to predict uh, potential uh, COVID-19 uh, virus risk uh, during the hospitals. And also we use these sensors to test if the subway is safe or not uh, at the uh, apply of 2040, uh, uh, 20, sorry, and to give the scientific uh, percentage rate for the government uh, decision. And also, we can use this approach to build a 2D IEQ uh, parameter distribution. Here, uh, I want to show you is uh, in a internet uh, uh, airport terminal buildings in Beijing. And the figures show you is the temperature distribution uh, all by all. And the second is two, uh, PM 2.5. And the third one is the uh, CO2. 
So we can see there is a, a spatial difference more than 8.8 K. So yeah, in real uh, management, we can optimize the uh, HVAC systems to solve this problem. And also we found the PM2.5 uh, spatial difference uh, nearly 72 mg mg uh, per cubic meters. Also, that means this area should be stressing the air clean hand, uh, air, uh, hand, air handling systems for real case. And also we can find the spatial difference. That means we can reduce the uh, fresh air supply ratio in certain area because the CO2 is very low. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, it can meet the uh, good air quality standards. With this technology, we also introduced these systems for uh, other hospitals uh, beyond Wuhan. So we just use the CO2 PM2.5 in the uh, temperature in the illuminance parameters. With this uh, spatial temporal distribution, uh, distribution, we can realize where the values will be held, where the risk uh, exists. And also we can carry out the daily patterns uh, recognition following the massive 10 serial data. Yeah, just with the sensor system, uh, we got a lot of uh, data. So we can carry out some data mining uh, with a new 10 series uh, clustering MISO based on the combination of the professional knowledge in the virtual uh, engineering. Here we show you the process. Uh, we just to use the numerical feature whereas the channel feature to get the knowledge uh, discovery. There are some uh, example. Uh, with this uh, sensor system, we got a massive data, yeah? massive curves of different uh, parameters uh, in different uh, place and time. So we will use the cyber cluster uh, proportion approach to get the, the right, right curve for different pictures, from different pictures. And finally, we can get the breakdown uh, of each cluster. And finally, we can get the typical uh, features for the uh, energy use and uh, uh, for, for each, each drone and each day. And with this uh, understanding, yeah, we can carry out a uh, prediction. We compare the different uh, machine learning organisms such as the Royden Forest ANN and the RISTM. And finally, we think, yeah, uh, the uh, performance of uh, the performance of uh, Ryden Forest will be best. This is uh, uh, the comparison which are for different organisms. Uh, more interesting is we also uh, develop the control uh, approach with the indoor occupant partitioning plus the IQ monitoring to realize the demand-based control. Uh, we use the camera plus the Wi-Fi to get the occupant distribution uh, time by time. And also we get the indoor parameters distribution similarly. So we can compare these two uh, figures and to find the environment control system effective or not. And with this approach, yeah, we can carry out uh, real-time location plus real-time AQ and real-time subjective vote 
to realize the smart control. We use the cloud-side AQ optimization engine to carry out the uh, simulation to op obtain the control strategy and send the bike and feed the bike to the uh, real feedback to the terminal of the environment system. Uh, here is what we used in the Shanghai Hongqiao uh, Terminal 1. They are based on a real-time IEQ uh, monitoring in the personal uh, position, uh, positioning technology. The IEQ uh, control system uh, will be funded. And finally, yeah, with the two years uh, operation, the energy saving is about 60%, mainly for the uh, lighting system and the air handling system. And the IEQ certification rate will be improved more than 85%. And also recently, we carry out some new uh, exploring. That means we use the uh, robot uh, to uh, integrate the sensors. And then we can find in a static sensing plus a mobile sensing. With this approach, uh, we can very quickly to find the uh, IEQ parameters, spatial and tempo distribution more easily. Uh, here is the process. The key point is how to uh, define the, uh, the moving load in the speed. And with this approach, yeah, we funded a OLA missile plus a Lagrange missile for different scenarios used. Firstly, uh, is to uh, transit the space. We can carry out quick uh, measurement to fill the temperature gaps in IEQ valuation. And secondly, it's for large space that we can uh, elaborate the measurement to obtain the high spatial Lucian IEQ parameters. And also we can carry out the partial in diagnosis for the IEQ control. In the third scenario is high risk space such as the ICU space of the hospital. Uh, we need to consider the various uh, risk so we can use the robot to replace human to study the environment exposure on the specific path. And also, we can carry out the patch and the diagnosis of the IQ control. Okay, uh, due to the time limited, I come to the conclusion. Uh, today, uh, we agreed that digitalization is effective for improving architectural design and operation management performance. What we did is for architectural design, our study is uh, from the performance optimization to performance integrated with uh, phone funding to generative design. And finally, maybe in the future, yeah, with the support of you, we can carry out and realize the data and knowledge integration in architecture, cognitive, intelligent automation. But maybe in the future, we need a more understanding of the architecture design capability, not only from the uh, common uh, operation, but also for his oral presentation. And for smart operation and management, we carry out a sensing, understanding, control, and feedback approach. The most important is to build a massive big data platform. And finally, we can use a 2D uh, spatial 
uh, spatial partial, sorry, spatial temple uh, 2D uh, understanding of the IEQ parameters. And finally, we can carry out the multi objective uh, performance uh, improvement in the future. So uh, that's my presentation. And thank you again for your focus. Yeah, that's all. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you so much. And the lecture from Professor um, uh, Lin Borong, I think uh, it's a fantastic framework you put forward uh, on the research of the IEQ, especially the index of environmental uh, quality, which is a specific uh, 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 aspects which uh, 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 address in a lot of scenarios, including the airport, including the post-COVID hospital design and other uh, different uh, public uh, building. So uh, the first question, uh, as you mentioned uh, in your lecture, uh, Professor Ling, uh, so you're talking about the 40% of the performance optimization actually uh, could be addressed in the schematic design, is, which is actually a uh, uh, very early stage of the mm -hmm. conceptual design phases. So uh, as an uh, architect, because we have a lot of architects here, we are quite interested in such kind of um, um, uh, database uh, optimization and also introduce a lot of uh, uh, artificial intelligence methodology to optimize uh, the process. So we would like to know um, your approach, how to address uh, the IEQ, uh, this kind of methodology, thinking methodology through a special toolbox, which could be implemented, could be used by the designers in the design process. So how to make a special collaboration uh, with uh, your contribution uh, uh, of, uh, of uh, the whole holistic research you, you just uh, uh, present. So could you uh, uh, introduce a little bit on that? Okay, yeah, thank you, Professor Yuan. So uh, yes, uh, you know, uh, at the early stage, uh, due to the uh, uncertainty of the building form uh, layout and the performance of the envelope in the uh, energy system, uh, the potential for uh, energy and IQ improve, uh, improvement will be more than, will be higher than 30 or 40%. Uh, the principle is the energy and the carbon emission uh, equals to the uh, load density uh, times the uh, floor area and times the operation time and divided by the uh, COP of the energy system. So this is uh, uh, four factors uh, times uh, Principle. So if we can, uh, we can realize one or two parameters saving that the potential for saving or improvement will be uh, huge. For energy saving, uh, I think everybody will be uh, uh, understanding uh, very clearly. Yeah, but for IQ, uh, what we want to show you is also just as AQ including the uh, uh, daylighting, uh, the thermal comfort, and the uh, air quality. For daylighting in thermal comfort is similar to the energy saving. For air quality, uh, we also need to consider the uh, outdoor uh, air quality firstly. And finally, we can use the uh, performance of the envelope to judge if the air quality, the I/O, the, the input and output ratio of the PM two point five data uh, uh, good or not. Similarly, we also can use the simulation approach. So, um, our approach, uh, you mean the calib uh, calibration process. Uh, in fact, there are many uh, calibration uh, cases in the international uh, organization, such as the IBIPSA. Uh, there is a best test uh, database 
uh, we can use this best database for energy, for uh, daylighting, and for summer comfort. But for air quality, maybe uh, we need uh, other research uh, support in the future because in developed countries, uh, air quality, uh, in fact, is not a problem. So this is my uh, suggestion. Okay, thank you. Great. I think uh, uh, IEQ uh, research uh, uh, methodology actually a special perspective uh, you put forward and uh, to integrate artificial intelligence in the whole working flow, including the simulation optimization, which contributes a lot to the design process. And that is really uh, uh, actually uh, uh, relate so much on the energy saving, low carbon, uh, which is the, uh, the most important, uh, significant topic we should address all the researchers. Uh, all the design works in, in, into this scenario. So thanks a lot uh, for your uh, contribution to, uh, the, uh, to the conference. So due to the, the, the time, we have run up five times, five, five minutes. So we should directly go to the sessions. Uh, we, uh, I would uh, to introduce, we have one session still in this room and another session you can follow the, the guidance of the, the Bocha. We send all the participants. So welcome, uh, join us in the other part of the conference. So thanks a lot to Professor Lin for your okay. uh, uh, remarkable lecture. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Professor Yuan. And thank you all of you. Bye-bye. OK, I think the session chair I would like to introduce is um, uh, Nick Bao. Are you here? Hi, Professor Yuan. Yeah, yeah, you're moved. Okay, so uh, you, uh, so I would like to give the screen to you uh, for your chairing the session A here, and also we want to uh, announce we have another session two 